turnovers, six assists, plus 13 in 10 minutes. Like, how, how valuable is it for you to have a guy that's so focused on getting the rest of these scorers involved early from those first kind of possessions of the game? Yeah, it's big. Um, he understood the game plan and that this is a heavy shift team that packs the paint, tries to protect the rim, and gives up a lot of threes, and so he's finding guys. But yeah, I, I love that about him, that he doesn't care about scoring or whatever. It's making the right play. And so if he has zero shots in the game, presents those pa pocket passes and kickouts. outs. He'll take that all day, and it kind of got us on the right step there as far as mentality-wise of making it easy on each other and getting guys shots. Pretty much all point guards are four generals to some degree. Not with him, the, <laughs> with him <laughs> the way he gets guys involved, is that special to a degree in this league, would you say? Yeah, I think he understands who he is and you know when he has to be aggressive and the, guy, the guys that depend on him to get shots. And you know it sounds like a simple game sometimes and making the right read and over and over and over and not getting anxious or a little thirsty when you don't get shots and he doesn't care about that and then when the game opens up he'll take those and he play off other guys so to have a, a true combo guard that can you know obviously initiate but also play off the ball has been a benefit for us. Josh How much has Aaron meant to your rotation this year? It's been huge I mean um, you know when we talked to him about talked to him in free agency uh, what we loved about him was he was always prepared very professional uh, another guy that compliments the group well on and off ball and the shooting ability, obviously, but the defensive tenacity too. And so just an overall guy that's been through every situation, you know, start if you need be, if you need him to. And then obviously he can be a, a great backup as he is right now or a third guard and always stays prepared. And so all those things we factored into why we wanted him here. And unfortunately that our man goes down, but yeah, you obviously have a great piece there that's ready to play and seeing what he's done. Josh Giddy, not a guy known for shooting the basketball. The game plan was obviously to have Alperin Shingun guarding him. How do you think he handled that defensive assignment? He was good. He clogged the lane. I think he could have been a little more aggressive helping guys at times. And then, you know, he still want to give a little doubt and, you know, fake out at him. Uh, but that was the plan, and he's going to knock some down eventually, you know, two for five. But more <coughs> so than that, he didn't take that many. I mean, you know, five, he had probably ten or so wide open. And, and it, it gives us a big body to – Crowd the paint, you know, number one driving team in the league, and you know they're a team that hunts mismatches and penetration is their big key. So Alperin being there was a little bit of a d deterrent on him. Coach, what 18. do you think about the job? Oh, what do you think about the job that Jabari Smith Jr. did tonight, as far as sacrificing on the offensive end to make sure that he played great defense and crashed the boards the way he did? Jabari and who? No, I said Jabari. Just Jabari. <laughs> yeah, he was great. He, um, you know, it, like I said, we are a well-rounded team that can be anybody's night and. Um, when it's not, you know, six, you know, only four shots and, and, and six points, but the rebounds are huge, especially um, with, you know, Holmgren's length there. Guys are battling him. He came from the weak side and cleaned up a bunch, and so that was big for us to get us out in transition, get us running, and we had a ton of second chance points. So he was huge as far as that, you know, four offensive rebounds, led to kickouts, and uh, like I said, same thing with Fred. When guys aren't scoring, they could still impact the, the game in other ways. You guys led, um, you, you guys held Chip to um, four points tonight. What was the defensive game plan going into that, and how was it um, able to be so successful? And we want to put a smaller guy on him to not only take away his pick and pops and some of his advantages down the lane, um, some of his roles in the lob threat, we can switch those actions, and as well as take away Gilgis Alexander's pick and roll or something and just make him beat us one-on-one -on -one if, if he wants to go with isolation. And so it was twofold there, and it worked well with him, but I think as much as that, it was us, you know, Alperin's scoring threat in the post kind of going at him there and, you know, that can wear guys down. And so um, guys did a great job defensively focused on him, but um, all around game plan was to take away all the threats and, you know, pick a pop. He is a versatile guy that does a lot of things. And so I felt like we did a good job with that. It felt like Dylan and Alperin set the tone with their physicality. What did that do for the entire team? Yeah, I think from the start, you know, we saw, um, I think it was Dylan, um, Giddy was on him, so he's very aggressive there attacking, whether it was ducking post-ups and then Alpi as well. Um, you know, we want to take advantage of Holmgren inside. He has great length, but um, not, the, not the strongest guy inside. And so Alperin has an advantage there. And just uh, we want to kind of set the tone with that and went to that in the first few plays. And everybody else kind of rallied around it. Coach, it seems like Tarrison has been able to find ways to impact the game just all over the court. What have you seen from him having to miss time early on in the season with injury, but now get, get able to blow things and running a rhythm? Yeah, that's who he is and who he's been. Um, you know, metric-wise or analytic-wise, he is off the charts for all those reasons. Uh, you know, obviously defends, can shoot the ball and do some different things with the offensive rebounding, the loose balls, and 
you know, where other guys might touch their hands and lose it, he gets every one of those. And so he impacts the game in all those ways, not only that defensively as well. And then, you know, he just makes the right plays over and over. And so uh, we're happy that his minutes are starting to go up and we can play him a little bit more here and there. And we understand how impactful he is for us. How much was it? Was there a carryover from the way you finished the third quarter to that run that started the fourth? Yeah, I would say so. We kept going back and forth a little bit, and you know that was a message at halftime, and even in the third quarter, um, you know we were up ten and felt like we should have been up more. You know some of the mistakes and the turnovers for sure. You know twenty one, they got twenty six points on those, and so you, know, you have fourteen steals. It's basically because you're playing in the crowd, and you know that's a heavy shift team like we talked about. So finished it well and saw how we can make it very easy, and then like you said, rolled that over into the fourth quarter and. And the message was, you let this team hang around, and they're going to start making shots, and they got some elite scores. But um, for us, we didn't love how we handled you know, the crowd at times and felt like we could have been up more. But to finish the third that way was well going into the fourth. What do you like about the, uh, the lineup of Jabari, Tari, and Dylan Brooks? What can that do, and uh, how much work do you see like, that grouping together? Yeah, it was good, especially against a team that doesn't have traditional uh, bigs or scoring bigs in the post. Uh, we, can go, we can be versatile there with those guys. You know, Jabari has a length, and those other guys are just, you know, more strong, strong players that can kind of guard multiple positions. But, you know, obviously Jeff Green being out tonight impacted that. And so we don't always have to play Jabari at the five, but it is some, something that we feel comfortable with. And he obviously usually has an advantage on the offensive end against the five. So um, something that we looked at in summer league, he played well, obviously, he's done it at times last year. And due to our depth and the guys that we have, I think we don't do it much, but it's an option for sure. Dylan's a guy. Lead to more use of the three guard lineup with Aaron in, or was that just because the way he was going? Yeah, that was part of it. Um, you know, when you're down a, guy, a man or two, Jock is obviously out as well, and, and then and then Jeff is out. You know, we went with different lineups, but so part of it was they don't have huge wings. You know, it's, it's not a you know, LeBron James or Kevin Durant or one of those guys, so they had a lot of small wings as well. So we felt comfortable uh, with our small lineup, but like the fact that those three guys could attack and. Obviously, shoot the ball and be threats out there. Coach, I know we've talked about it before, but and I know you say that you don't like to look at it as you know road or home. But I mean, nine wins at home and the way that you all just play differently is are you is, are you starting to see any difference in between the two, or is it something that they're just doing when they're here? I mean, the, the record speaks for itself, but you know, I felt like we played well enough to win on the road. It's just the consistency and you know. You letting leads slip away or, you know, a lot of close games, it bodes well for the future as far as, you know, us finishing those out. So, uh, yeah, you want to obviously finish those out and be better on the road and not have this discrepancy with home on the road. But, um, you know, it's not like we're getting blown out on the road. So, you know, just got to tweak a few things, play through some crowd noise or whatever and, and come away with those wins. All right. Thanks, Coach.